another Sunday night fellowship session of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Another time of uh, throwing the light of God's word into the lives of whosoever wills. So that it might be well of all such people for now and for all eternity. Remember that the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement is the evangelistic arm of Voice of the Last Days Ministry Incorporated. Remember also that the term Catholic as used in the ministry's name is used in its original and proper sense. And in that sense, the word means a universal and for all. The subject matter we are addressing in this Sunday Light Ministration is there are no treasures at the threshold. There are no treasures at the threshold. This subject matter is considered very uh, salient at this point in time because the Lord will have all who have been participating in this uh, very insightful ongoing broadcast to benefit maximally from what they are hearing. Now to prepare our heart souls for what God has for us at this point in time through the broadcast let us join our music ministry as it is usual with us to take the following hymns for inspiration. Hymn number one is, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. That hymn is found in number 131 if you have the watchman hymnal. The second hymn is, Open my eye that I may see. The number is 234. The third is, Deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus. 
The number is 170. And the fourth is Wonderful Ways of Life, number 42. that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key Shallow glass and sets me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, I will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me.
deeper in the love of Jesus daily let me go Wonderful words of life, song for two. Sing 
and be the better and be the better and be the better and be the best for what we hear. It is your prerogative to talk to the Lord in prayer wherever you find yourself. Eternal Father, thank you very much for another opportunity to hear your word. I bless your name because there is not any creature, as we often say, and as written in the scripture, that is not manifest in your sight. The offense are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Praise your name, precious Lord, because of the subject matter we have at hand. And I know that you are the one that gave it by your spirit. Lord, I want to thank you because we know that the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for us with ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us 
groanings which cannot be altered, and he said, that such the heart, where it's what the mind of the spirit, and he answered our prayers, because the spirit maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Lord, it is thee who art alive in the now and at present everywhere, whose eyes run to and fro, the earth air to show yourself strong on the behalf of them who sat is perfect toward you that we are depending on for this life. Now the days are evil. There is a lot of uh, pummeling from the kingdom of darkness. Lord, we thank you because of the promise of the master. He said you are going to build a church on the note that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And then on that rock, was going to build the church and is building the church and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against that church. Thank you very much because you are in the preparation of that church for the rapture. Glory be to your holy name as your word comes out. Let it be useful in the hand of the Lord to do the things that the Lord wants to do with his word as is usual with him. Sanctifying the people, healing the people, and bringing about the power of God to bear in their circumstances. Lord, we bless your name for answer to prayers. Whosoever that has called upon your name anywhere in the world, even at this point in time or in the future, we pray that such a person receive answer from the Lord according to your promise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the coming King, we have prayed. And we say amen everywhere. Amen. As before stated, the discourse we have in hand is one that is considered to be salient for such a time like this. The reason is this, over the period we have had a very insightful uh, messages from the Lord, messages during our charismatic hour, such as uh, necessities led upon God to fulfill all his obligation that he owes his children, messages such like, uh, it's not a big deal for God to do what you are asking at his hand to do. And then we have had uh, some the light teachings I'll talk about uh, the woes of God, past and present, and the one that I've uh, talked about, the attributes of God, and the way they work in the circumstances of men. And then there are all other insightful messages. Remember the series in the book of Psalms. And the last one in the Psalms is titled uh, uh, Calmness, in the face of trouble and then confession of faith, part two of that uh, study, in the face of trouble. And I thank God for what is dishing out. But then we are branching, like we have mentioned, to this message that says there are no treasures at the threshold because God would have every person to maximally benefit from all that he has been dishing out to us. Now, there are no treasures at the threshold. And uh, in this uh, message, I'm going to define treasure. That's point number one. Point number two, we're going to define the threshold. Point number three, we're going to define treasure in the context of the message, that is, what do treasures mean as far as this uh, message is concerned? And then we also look at threshold in the context of the discourse. Then finally, we're going to look at the fact that there are no treasures at the threshold. At the end of the day, we'll say a word or two to the youth uh, in the church and that are outside the church. And then we will draw the curtain. Treasure defined. The word treasure among the Hebrews signifies 
anything collected together. In other words, provisions or stores of that thing, anything collected together. Now, treasure could be a collection of corn, a collection of wine, a collection of oil, a collection of honey, as we have in Jeremiah chapter 41. Jeremiah chapter 41, I'm reading from verse 6. And Ishmael, the son of uh, Netaniah, went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Gadaliah, the son of Ahikam. And it was so when they came into the midst of the city, that Ishmael, the son of Netaniah, slew them and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat. A collection, heaps of wheat, and of barley, and of oil, and of honey. And because of that, he spared them. The point we are taking is that treasure could be a collection of wheat, or corn, or wine, or oil, or honey. Treasure also could be a collection of gold, silver, brass, as we have in Ezekiel chapter 28, Ezekiel chapter 28, we're reading verses 1 to 4. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyros, Thou said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and uh, not God. Thus thou set thine heart as the heart of God. This is talking about the judgment that God brought upon Tyrus. And then, verse 3. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding thou hast gotten the riches has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Gold and silver, when they are brought together in a storehouse, you could refer to them as uh, treasures. And then, it could also be a collection of gift items. Let's see that in Matthew chapter 2, the wise men that came to Bear respect unto the child that has been born, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what was stated concerning them. In Matthew chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and I come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and our Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor, and shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had uh, privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And they sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for young child. When you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him. Also, verse 11, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, their boxes of gift items, 
They presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. So treasure could be box of uh, gift items, as we see in that place. Treasure also could mean very important or hollow things that are stored or preserved carefully. Look at Ezra chapter 5. There is from verse 15 and said unto him, Take these verses, go carry them into the temple that is in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be builded in his place. Then came the same church bazaar and laid the foundation of the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And since that time, even until now, had it been in building, and yet it's not finished. Now, therefore, verse 17, if it seem good to the king, let that be such made in the king's treasure house. The place of important and hallowed things or documents that are stored or preserved carefully. Which is there a Babylon, whether it be so, that a decree was made of Cyrus, he came to build this house of God at Jerusalem. And let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. That is that about treasure as is used in the Bible. Now, that is a physical things we are talking about. Now, let's go to look at uh, threshold. Remember that what we are talking about is that there are no treasures at the threshold. And I've defined treasure as used in the Bible, various aspects of treasure. These are physical treasures we are talking about. Now, the threshold literally is the floor or ground at the bottom of a doorway. If you come to where you are staying, whether it is a bungalow, and then there is the doorway that leads you into that house. Or you are living in an apartment, a block of those apartments, and you are living in one of the apartments. Now the threshold is at the door that leads you into that apartment. Now, that door or that part of that house is not inside. It is just at the beginning, at the place where the door is. That is the threshold. The threshold can also be those steps that you take to come to the door. Now, let's see an example of a threshold. And that is in 1 Samuel, we're reading the 5th chapter. 1 Samuel, chapter 5. It was a case when the Philistines had captured the Ark of the Covenant and carried it to the house of their god, Dagon. And this is what happened. 1 Samuel chapter 5, reading verse 4. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, the old Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. On the doorway, just at the entrance there, that's at the threshold. And um, verse 5, Therefore neither the priest of Dagon, nor any that come into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon, and I don't unto this day. The steps that lead to that uh, platform or to that place where their God was domiciled. That is about the threshold. Literal meaning of the threshold, the doorway. The entry point to the house where you are. Now, want to look at treasures as uh, is meant in the message we have at hand. Remember, the discourse again is that there are no treasures at the threshold. No treasures at the threshold. We have uh, defined 
physical treasures. We have defined physical threshold. But now let's look at the treasure that we are talking about in this message. The treasure in the context of this uh, message is as follows. God's stores of wisdom, God's stores of knowledge, God's stores of understanding, guidance, protection, insight, faith, divine healing, and health, and whatever else that can accrue to man from God, including the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit, whatsoever that can accrue to man from God, whatsoever that we can find in the treasury of God's goodies, these are the things that we are talking about. No treasures can be found at the threshold. Now, we look at the spiritual threshold, the threshold in our context. The threshold, as far as this message is concerned, signifies the entrance to the treasury and not the inside of the treasury. The entrance to the treasury. Listen to me. Treasures are kept in a place called the treasury. Now, it could be corn, it could be wheat, it could be hollow things, it could be gold, silver, and whatever. Now, wherever those things are put, they are the treasury. Now, even this money, for instance, the tithe that are paid and the priests paid their own tithe after the tithe they received. Now, all of them are put in the treasury, in the house of the Lord. And the treasury is inside the house. Treasures are usually inside the house. And therefore, there are no treasures that you can find outside the house. And uh, now we want to draw these inferences. Treasures cannot be found outside the treasury, cannot be found at the threshold. Now, what are the inferences that we are drawing? And why are we drawing the inferences? We are drawing this inference because, as I've told you, we have insightful messages all this while and we continue to have but you know what those messages are meant to build the people those messages are meant to do exactly what god intends that they should do in the lives of the people every person there are those that need salvation those messages show the year salvation there are those that need sanctification. Those messages to you need sanctification. There are those that need healing. There are those that need any aspect of the goodies of the Almighty God, the protection of the Lord, and what have you. Those are pieces of information that every one of us is hearing at every point in time, whether it is during the charismatic hour session, or the Bible study session, or the Sunday light like this. They are meant to yield those dividends. And God will have the people to have those dividends, to have them to enjoy. They are not being stated for stating sake. I've often told you that we are not stating fanciful things. And we are stating the things are real. The very mind of God. So, it means that if you are seeking baptism with the Holy Spirit, if you are seeking sanctification, if you are seeking that the Lord should heal you physically, heal you, heal your mind, heal you emotionally, if you are seeking that the Lord should grant you one favor or another, if you are seeking that he should give you the boldness, of the lion of the tribe of Judah, if you are seeking that he should remove fear from you, if you are seeking that he should remove one thing or the other that is disturbing you, if you are seeking that the Lord should free you from demonic possession or oppression, God is willing and is bringing about mechanisms to make these things come to pass in your interest. But you know what? 
He is wanting to tell us that part of the reason why people are not getting what they should get is that they are wanting to get treasures from the threshold. But there is no such thing. The treasures are not at the threshold. Now you're asking me, what do you just mean? Treasures are not in, at the threshold. Of course, that's what I just mean. They are not at the threshold. And then what does it imply? It looks like an idiom, but what does it imply? Imply that if you don't come diligently, if you don't come steadily, diligently, on and on and on, and come to develop the kind of relationship that you should develop with God, then you may not be able to get what you are looking for. It is not a casual matter. The Lord does not want any casual anything. Now, I want to go read some scriptures that show that treasures are not at the threshold. If you are wanting that the Lord should do anything, any of the things that were mentioned or any of the things that were not mentioned, but there are promises of God, standing provision. There are two numerals to mention. Then you must get into the treasury. You must get inside, not outside. You cannot afford not to get inside. You can't stand by the sidelines and expect to get it. You cannot sit on the fence and expect to get it. May I read you some scriptures to prove my point. I'm reading from Jeremiah chapter 29. Let's read from verse 10. For thus said the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I faint toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall he call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your hearts. Remember that in the day of Daniel, Daniel was reading the writing, the scrolls, and then came across this point that was made, and then began to pray and fast, and then an angel was sent to him to answer him on the matter. He sought and fasted and prayed, telling us that if he shrugged his shoulder, if he didn't want to know, he will not know. If you don't want to know, you will not know. If you don't want to seek, you will not find. If you don't want to knock and continue knocking, it will not be opened unto you. That's the principle of God. If you seek, you will find. If you ask, you will receive. If you knock, it will be opened unto you. And if it has not been opened unto you, keep knocking and keep seeking and keep asking. That is the rule. You don't withdraw. There is nothing like casualness in the matter of following God. There are no treasures are the threshold. The treasures are in the treasury. The treasures of the Lord, the spiritual treasures, are in his house proper, in the sanctuary, in the treasury. No wonder we are told to come to the throne of grace by faith. No wonder we are told to come to the throne of grace. Come there to plead your case by faith. And so we find that this is what was uh, uh, stated by the Lord himself. And then in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 29, but if from thence ye shall seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. There are those that they begin to seek and they seek for one day, for one week, for one month, and they have not found, and they become discouraged, and they get tired, not knowing or not remembering that the Lord Jesus Christ had drawn a parable in Luke chapter 18 and said, 
Men ought always to pray and not to be discouraged and not to faint and not to stop and not to be wearied. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now they are praying and then they pray a little, pray for two weeks fast and then nothing happened and then they stop and they get discouraged. No, this is not the way it is. The way it is is that you enter and as you are remaining in his presence, as you are tiring in his presence and you are praying and you are even fasting, listen to me, at a point in time you will develop such a relationship. At a point in time the faith will brew inside your heart and you will not have any doubt as to the existence of God. It, an awareness will brew and grow inside you. There will be no doubt as to whether there is heaven, as to whether there is hell, as to whether there is life after death. Those that, that don't have this thing that we are talking about, they are blind, spiritually blind. They are like the sun that is shining in its strength. But then soon, there is a large crowd gathering and then covers at the rays of the sun and every place becomes gloomy wherever you are. These people are like people whose hearts, whose spiritual hearts have been covered with a dark and a, a dark cloth, with, with wax, and they have covered them, their hearts. And they will not be able to see because they are not doing the thing they should do in order that their eyes of understanding might be open. Listen to me. If you want the eyes of understanding to be open, you need to go into the house. You need to go into the treasure house of the Lord. That is where to find the treasures. That's where to partake of the treasure. Listen to me. Partaking of the treasures can be likened to tapping. Tapping from the water mains. Tapping from the electric mains. What is water mains? Water mains is that big pipe that takes water from the reservoir and then runs along the streets. And then people tap from that pipe, tap water into their houses, into their kitchens, into their toilets. So if you want to tap, then you go to where the treasures are and tap from there. You cannot tap from where the treasures are not. For instance, if you want to tap water from the water mains, you must go to the tap. You must go to that, that water mains. So that is how to understand what we are talking about. And then we have the Lord Jesus Christ telling us, even this thing that I am saying, it is not a peripheral something. You don't stand casually. There are those that come to church casually. There are those that listen to the word of God casually. There are those that listen and then as soon as the fellowship is over, they go and do many, many other things throughout the week. And uh, they even go home, even in the days where uh, the fellowship is physical. Now they come from fellowship and then nothing else until another fellowship there. Until another fellowship there. They come there and sit down and scratch their heads. Some come there and sit down and then... Um, they want to make phone call immediately. They are, they are just saying, preacher, finish. I have, a, I have some business call to make. And then all the thing is casual. Some come very late, very late, even very late. Even during this time of uh, ministering online, people still come late to the online ministration such as this. We ought not to be. It is not anything casual. Casualness will yield nothing because casualness will not allow you to enter the treasure house, to enter into the sanctuary. And uh, the Lord Jesus Christ says something that will help us have proper understanding as to what we are saying. In John's Gospel, I am reading chapter 15, verses 6 and 7. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are born. If ye abide in me, 
and my ways abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you abide in me, how do you abide in him? How do you abide in him when you are not uh, reading his word, you are not praying his word, you are not meditating on his word, you are not considering what you should consider, you are not returning to what you should return to, you are not listening to what you should listen to, you listen to that thing casually once in a while and then you go and listen to all the other things of this life and those other things of this life that are contrary will just knock out everything that you have listened to before and you become barren again. You will not have treasures. Treasures that are in the treasury of the Lord. You cannot have them because you are at the threshold. You come as a uh, somebody who is not interested in loitering around. You are sitting on the fence, but there is no fence to sit. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, and we are reading verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and test after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and test after righteousness. They pursue, they develop hunger, they develop tests and they enter and they, are, and they are remaining before the Lord. And they are remaining before the Lord. And then if you will not remain before the Lord in these days, my friend, you have a problem, something sinister is, is, is waiting to happen. If you will not remain before the Lord, these days when Satan and the one third of the angel that he came with him, are doing a lot of mesmerization, mesmerizing the whole world. They have invented so many things, things that destabilize, things that discourage, things that pollute. And you are in this present world, and you are not entering into the sanctuary. How do you want to survive? How do you want to survive the onslaught? The world is filled with immorality. The world is filled with the obscene. The world is filled with the absurd. And then the world is filled with sin, with bloodshed, with tears and everything. But the Lord is alive. But the Lord is alive and in his treasures, in his sanctuary, are filled with treasures, with whatsoever that you need. I tell you the truth, I lie not. The Lord has whatsoever it will take to keep you on and on and on. But then, are you on the periphery? If you are on the periphery, make up your mind that from today, you'll stop being on the periphery. Listen to me. Those that are delaying to be saved, why are you delaying? You are not saved. Is it because you cannot be saved? Is it because the Lord does not want you to be saved? Those that, that have not been sanctified is because you didn't bother. Those that have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, those that have not known the depths of uh, Jesus, is because you don't bother about knowing the depths of Jesus. But ironically, there are those that, that uh, uh, follow Satan and uh, enmesh themselves and, uh, and they go, go full throttle into the knowledge of Satan and they don't care about it. Now you are saying, I am in the church, I'm a child of God, but you do not want to go, get inside proper. Now Jesus Christ said that if you seek and you are hungry and you are thirsty, then you will find. And seeking makes you enter in. Now in Psalm 1, hear this. Psalm 1, the very Psalm 1. We're reading from verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That is it. That is how to get into the storehouse, into the sanctuary, into the treasure into the treasure house, into the treasury. It is as you do these spiritual things, you are entering into the treasury of the Lord, into the house proper. In Isaiah chapter 41, 
Isaiah 41, I'm reading verse 17. Isaiah 41, when the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for test, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. When they are past, when they are seeking, when they are thirsty, now it makes them to draw near. Have you not known? How that he said, draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto thee. You draw away from him, he draws away from you. You honor him, he honors you. This is the rule of the Lord. There are no treasures at the threshold. Meaning, there are not going to be any things for anybody that is at the threshold, that is uh, loitering around the church. You listen to that. Young person listen to that. Adult listen to that. Pastor listen to that. Now, many people are backsliding over the years. Passage of time have made people to backslide. Now they were zealous. Now they were zealous. They were evangelistic. They were all the time, day in, day out. They come from Bible study. They come from Sunday light. They come from church. And they fall on their faces. They come from work. And they fall on their faces and they are praying and praying. And then they review the thing they had even in the last retreat. And they are reviewing and they are praying. Now you are saying, is it necessary? It is very necessary. That's what brought those of us that are standing to where we are. And if we are going to still stand, we will continue to enter. To enter and enter. And enter until... Until uh, we will have uh, gotten everything that we need to get from the treasury of the Lord. And then it will no more be a difficult thing for us uh, to overcome what we should overcome. That's that. Now, he says, when their hearts are searching and searching and searching, he will answer them. So then, I enjoin you to do what? To... From today, begin to say, no more casualness, no more fire brigade approach in seeking the Lord, in praying. If you are not tired talking, why should you be tired talking to the Lord? If you are not tired eating, why should you be tired eating the word? If you are not tired seeking, seeking this and seeking that. Seeking the material things, seeking the mundane things, seeking education, seeking knowledge, seeking whatever you are seeking. Those things you are seeking legitimate, and some people are seeking illegitimate things. If you are not tired seeking legitimate things, and some are seeking illegitimate things, why should you be tired seeking the thing that will guarantee eternity with Jesus Christ? Listen to this. Eternity is near. Eternity is near. Eternity is near. So, get to the sanctuary, get to the treasure house, and uh, get the things that you should get from there, because uh, the things that are there cannot be brought outside. In Psalm 91, many people read this psalm, and they read it superficially. They do not know what it means, what it's talking about. Let's read Psalm 91. Read it. But do you know what you are reading? What is he saying? From verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Where is the secret place of the Most High? The secret place of the Most High is uh, that place that he said. Far inside, inside his house, inside his house, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, under the shadow of protection of the Almighty. Secret place of the Most High. Listen to me. Now, if you get in and then and go in and go in, and the Lord now verse with you, faith, immeasurable faith, 
Then you are abiding in the secret place of the Most High. Why some people are shouting and then shouting for defeat, you are shouting for mastery. That is what it is. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. For this to be your experience, you must have been somebody who has entered the treasury in order to get all the things that you need to get from the house of the Lord. Let me tell you again the reason for this discourse. There are no treasures at the threshold. is as follows. We have with us fantastic things, insightful pieces of information from time to time. We have begun a charismatic hour session that is titled, What's the Big Deal? It's not a big deal, and I thank God for those that have embraced it. And more of it is coming. It's not a big deal. Now, but if you don't get anything, it is because you are not doing what you should do. When you listen to it, you become excited, but then did you go back to it to think about it? Is this really a big deal? What has God done in times past? What is he capable of doing? And then you are, you are musing on those things. You are musing on those things. Listen to me. It is as somebody is doing that, that the person is entering in and entering in and entering in. How is it that uh, uh, Apostle John, the beloved, how is it that um, he was uh, the synoptic writer that said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. How is it that he was able to know this? It was because he was, he was close. He drew close. He drew close. And so the Holy Spirit made him to have a revelation information that some of the other people didn't have. He drew close. Remember the time when Jesus Christ had spoken and said when they were gathered, one of you is going to betray me, be the enemy. And then they asked John to ask him. And this John was leaning on his breast. This John was leaning on him, lying on his breast as a child. How do you attend to Jesus? How do you see him? You see him as the savior of the world and that's the end. And then you do not want to develop a, a close relationship how will you not get what you should get? There are no treasures at the threshold. If you refuse to do the thing that you should do, if you refuse to draw near like those people drew near, how would you get what those people got? If he gives you what he gave to those people, you become an unjust God. But God is full of justice. It is what you merit that he gives to you. If you merit Esther, he gives you Esther. He will not give you B. And if you marry it, B, he will not give you Esther. Because if he does that, that is injustice. So then, from this hour, you know that the things that you have had in times past, go back to them, and the things that you're going to hear in the future. As you come to fellowship, don't come to fellowship to waste your time. Don't come to fellowship to pass time. It's not a, a time to just uh, loiter around and then uh, see some people and then wait for the end and then to begin to, to, begin to do uh, so many things, so many mundane things that you have been doing over the period. I didn't say you don't go to do the things that you, you need to do to make a living, but I'm telling you that if you engage yourself in those things 24-7, then you will be barren. And you don't engage in the things that you should engage in, you remain barren. And then you will not have what you should have. Bottom line, no treasures are the threshold. 
Enter the treasury. Enter the treasury. Anyone that is there. And then, meanwhile, you are neither here nor there. The Lord does not want that. You know what he wants? He wants that you are either completely out or you are completely in. That is desire. He doesn't want you to be neither here nor there. You are either completely out so that he will know that you are out or you are completely in. The Lord Jesus Christ said, if you love me partially, if you have regard for yourself or for your mother, for your father, for anything more than me, you know my disciple, you say, is he saying the same thing today? Yes, sir. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. He is saying the same thing today. So, you owe yourself the prerogative to do what? To enter even the treasury and then get the treasure that are there. They are waiting for you. God is willing to grant to anybody and on a steady note for that matter, whatsoever that individual is asking. And listen, I want to encourage you, go on asking the Lord, go on fellowshipping with him. You have known about uh, ministering unto the Lord, pondering anew what the Lord can do. We are expected to take note of those things and do them. Because we are doing some uh, natural things, some mundane things, some necessary mundane things. We are doing them. And so why should we not do the necessary spiritual things to keep our souls, to keep ourselves in the kingdom? We should go on and do and improve on the thing that we are doing. And enter, enter, and enter, and enter until we are filled with the presence of God. Listen to me. In Psalm 21, I read this promise, promise that God gave to me and to those that are aligned with me and to my spiritual children. Psalm 21, I read verse uh, 6. For thou hast made him most blessed forever, thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. Now listen to me. Max. Him exceeding glad with thy countenance means with his presence. You should partake of this because I am partaking of it. And I want to tell you that uh, those uh, that uh, are having a uh, kind of Abraham, they should partake of the blessings of that kind of Abraham. Lord partook of the blessing of Abraham because he followed his uncle. This is not a joke. Now, before I sign off, may I say a word or two to those youths that are in the church and those youths outside the church for such a time like this. Listen to me, youth, youthful mind. I want to tell you something. And what is it? Be ye not a sheep without a shepherd. Be ye not sheep without a shepherd. Be ye not sheep without shepherd. I read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, Matthew 9, 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted. They were weary. They wearied out. They were worn out. And were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. These people were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Listen to me. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the midst of the people. And then behold, multitudes of the people. This one there, this one there, this one to that direction, the other one to that direction, the other one to that direction. And then he was looking at them. And then compassion filled his mind. And then he said, look, these people are just worn out. 
and they are scattered and they are like the sheep without a shepherd. Listen to me. The sheep without a shepherd surely will scatter. The one will go into this direction, the other one will go backward, the other one will go to the west, the other one will go to the north, the other one will go to the northwest, the other one will go to the northeast, and they will just be going about seeking pasture. And then in the course of seeking pasture, because of the fact that there is no shepherd, they can get toxin. They can eat that that is deadly and put themselves in harm's way. That is that. Youth, do not remain a sheep without a shepherd. Do not remain somebody. You are growing up, and I want to show you what growing up is. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22, Apostle was saying to this youthful pastor, Timothy, he says, flee also youthful loss and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Listen to me. You are having adventurous mind. You are having a body system at this point in time that is uh, having quest for this. Having quest for the other. Having quest for even the things that are not, uh, are not acceptable. The things that, uh, uh, that are not according to righteousness. That's what the body will be talking. And then you are uh, adventurous. You want, to, you want to test this one. You want to test this one. But this man was warned. And you are younger than he is. And if a, somebody that is older than you was warned, somebody that is a little older than you, a youth was warned, he said, flee youthful loss, flee. Follow righteousness. You need to flee yourself. You need to, to flee. You need, of course, of course, uh, this man had a shepherd. Even this Timothy had a shepherd. Therefore, you cannot afford to live in the present world without a shepherd. If you have godly parents, thank God for your godly parents. If you have parents that are children of God and they are even ministers, thank God and take the counsel and take the shepherd's work of your parents, the shepherdhood of your parents. Take that. Now take the shepherdhood of uh, people that are ministering to you, even the youth pastors that are ministering to you that have some reputation. Take that. Don't stay without a shepherd. Don't make the mistake of wanting to go by your mind. Let me, let me try this. Shouldn't I live my life? You should live your life, but you should live your life under guidance. Otherwise, you put yourself into harm's way. Youth, be ye not sheep, sheep without shepherd. Now, you need to turn first of all to the bishop and shepherd of our souls. In 1 Peter chapter 2, let's read from verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose rights you were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Oh my God, these people were like sheep going astray, but they have now returned unto the bishop and shepherd of your souls. Do not make the mistake of abandoning this shepherd and bishop of our souls. Jesus Christ is a person. Do not make the mistake. Look around you and you will see very many people that have made the mistakes. They have entered into court. They have entered into street gangs. They have entered into marijuana. They have entered into crack. They have entered into cocaine. They have entered into cigarette smoking. They have entered into booze. They have entered into bizarre things. They have entered into cause and then given their lives to Satan. 
And then Satan has mesmerized them. Satan is not a friend. Don't ever make the mistake. If you have gone that way, I am asking you to return immediately to the bishop and shepherd of our soul. You will not regret being allowing Jesus to be your shepherd because he wants to be. Do not go without be having a shepherd. Do not be sheep without a shepherd. Do not now neglect what is being taught you. The good things that are being taught you. Don't neglect them. Don't push them away. Listen to the word of the Lord that you are being taught from time to time. Give your life to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are in the primary school or secondary school or university, now make friends with the people of God as you go there. Do not make the mistake of having no shepherd. Now listen to me. I show you how that if anybody refuses the shepherd, he will pay the price. In Proverbs chapter 2, from verse 1, My son, thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart unto understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for heat treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now, verse uh, 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee. Listen, what you are hearing right now is the words of wisdom. And then he said, if you receive this word and say to yourself, I cannot afford to live in this life without a shepherd. I cannot follow these other people, follow peer group, and then they are directing me, and I hear their words, and then I want to go into what they are doing. I get into the music they are playing. There is somebody that is uh, making music, and so many people are disgusted with the, the nasty things that are being done, the music from the devil from the pit of hell. And people are now intoxicated. And many people have, through those kinds of music, now been possessed by some demons. Now, listen to me. Don't make the mistake to get into that kind of uh, lifestyle. Because it will not pay you any good dividend. Never, never, never. It will not pay you any good dividend whatsoever. Make up your mind, be wise. Be wise in receiving what you are hearing. Withdraw yourself from friendship that does not want you to listen to the word of God. To live right and to make yourself to be somebody that is preserved. Preserved for the future. Preserved for marital life. A boy or a girl. Preserve your life. Now, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. To do what? Verse 12, to deliver thee from the will of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things, haughty things. Who live the path of uprightness and walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked and uh, they forward in their path to deliver thee. From the strange woman. To deliver thee from the strange woman or strange man. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Which forsaketh the guide of her youth. There you are. She forsook the guide of her youth. And there are many people that have forsaken the guide of their youth. That is the guide they should have from their parents. Their parents are wanting to give the guidance. But they are shaking their heads and saying leave me alone. I don't want to go this religious way. If you will not go this religious way, this biblical way, which way do you go? Do you want to go rascality way? You refuse the, the kind of thing that you are hearing. You want to remain in this world. Then you are exposing yourself unto the 
unto the terror of the wicked one. Remember that the devils are there monitoring every person. You are hearing this word even from the man of God. And you are being told not to make the mistake of forsaking the guide of your youth and forgetting the covenant of your God. Listen to me. Right, those are, that are there. And you've been given a well thought out name. The name they gave you when you were born. Because your parents are children of God. They gave you a well thought out name. And God gave you the name. But let me ask you. Is the name that was given to you reflecting in your life? Or is it ironically another thing that is reflecting in your life? Are you given to be James and then you are a Judas? Are you given to be root and then there is no diligence in you at all? Are you given to be Esther, but then there is nothing esthetic in your life? Are you given to be Deborah and then but uh, the Bible is nauseating to you? Deborah was a woman of God. Remember that when the Lord uh, uh, called on for somebody, a man, and then the person said, if Deborah would not go with me to the war, I will not go. And Deborah said, I go. My friend, life is short. You may be saying, oh, leave me to live my life. I, somebody said, somebody said, some woman said unto her pastor, some lady said to her pastor, pastor, leave me alone. I have not, I have not enjoyed my youth. And then went out from the church. To enjoy her youth and got smitten by Satan. Don't do that. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No. Leave me alone. No. Now, verse 17 again, we forsake the guide of our youth. Don't forsake the guide of your youth. This is what the Lord is bidding me to say to the youth that are there. And I pray. That the Lord of Sabaoth, who spirit is in the word that has been spoken, will help you that these words be received. What are you waiting for? Why should you not turn to Jesus? When you see that many are turning to Satan, turn to Jesus. You will not regret turning to Jesus. So, use and uh, and the young people that are in church and outside the church, quit following Satan. Make a turnaround, 180 degrees turnaround even this day. And when you do, the Lord will receive you and your future will be guaranteed. I wish I knew the Lord when I sought him in 1953 when I was only nine years old. That was when I saw him with weeping. But there was nothing like being born again at that time. There was nothing like Bible at that time. And so nobody could help me into the experience I wanted to have. But I later on, God saw my desire and gave me the experience at the age of 30. And listen to me, at the age of 76, I don't have any regrets at all. The regret is... I could have gotten it. I wanted to get it when I was nine. I would have been better off if I had gotten it at that time. You make her while the sun shines. As we sing some songs right away, then you are calling upon the Lord. And you are saying, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it has told your love unto me. Song number 172, if you have the watchman hymnal. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn unto thee. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of great divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. There are depths of love that I cannot know. 
till I cross the narrow sea, there are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. To the end, be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. Be thou forever near 
church at this moment in time and all those that are outside who are listening to what the Lord is saying to them these are the days that are evil and the devil has uh, done a lot of havoc onto the young people somebody had made a comment and said the social media will destroy we kill this generation. And they are posting and listening and shouting and doing those things. And their minds are overcome. And some have had the Satan and the sons of Belial. Even the spiritual entities jump into them as a result of those things that they are enjoying. But I know that the Lord of Sabaoth is walking on the other hand. You have heard that God has not ceded the word to Satan and cannot see the word to Satan. For every one angel of Satan, God has two angels. I want to encourage you to follow near face wherever you are and then say, Lord, Life is 
tough. But Jesus Christ being on my side, I shall not have any cause to withdraw. I cannot have any cause to, to be discouraged because he is everything to me. Jesus Christ can be anything to thee. Remember that of old he said, let the little children come unto me, for of them are the kingdom of God. God is interested in you. And men of God, the real men of God are interested. We're praying for you. I pray for you right now. Eternal Father, that liveth in heaven, that dwelleth in the place of power between the cherubims and the seraphim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he that came in the name of the Lord, even Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the coming king. Lord, I want to thank you because you know all the people that are out there that have viewed or have connected to this broadcast or that will yet connect. And you know the youth among them, the young stars, the young minds that are living in this bad day. Precious Father, I thank you because there is no big deal in you saving and keeping a young person, man and woman. There is no big deal in you making champions out of them. Eternal Father in glory, there is no big deal you making even Joseph's and making Daniel's out of the people. I bless your holy name. We're not talking fanciful things. We're saying the things that God will want us to say. And I know that God is at work. For Jesus Christ has said, my father walketh it at all, and I walk. Now, I see them in the places where they are, eternal rock of ages. And as they raise their hands unto the Lord of Sabaoth, and they fall upon their faces, and they are saying, Lord, deliver me and keep me. And they are saying, Lord, I don't want to go in the wrong way. I don't want to regret. I don't want to miss the guide of my youth. Eternal Father, I don't want to live in this life without a shepherd. Because uh, the lion and the bear is out there. It was because David was by the sheep. That was the reason the lion and the bear could not take the lamb. If David was not there, those lambs would have gone and gone forever. In the same way, Lord, there is a bishop and shepherd of our souls. His name is Jesus. And there is a host of other people that the Lord has given in the church, taking care of these youths. I pray, great Father in heaven, let your spirit that is hovering wherever everybody is right now, permitting to them, great Father in heaven, arrest those that should be arrested and bring them down to the cross of Calvary in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Lord, because I know that somebody will give a testimony. Not one person, not ten persons, not twenty persons, but multitudes of people giving testimony of what happened in the day and they listened on to this brief exhortation. I praise your holy name because I know you've answered. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name I have prayed. And let the people say Amen everywhere. I stray, gently lead me all the way. I am safe when by thy side. I will in thy love abide. Lead me, lead me, Savior, lead me lest I stray. Lead me, 
on him I can depend and I know I have salvation for I feel it in my soul I am determined to hold on to the end I am determined to hold on to the end Jesus is with me on him I can depend and I know I salvation for I feel it in my soul I am determined to hold on to the end I am determined to hold on to the end Jesus is with me on him I can depend and I know I have salvation for I feel 